U-5317 patrol is something I will never forget. It is nothing short of a miracle that the boat was able to limp home on one diesel engine and a prayer. Five crewmen were also killed in action, the first casualties under my command. U-531 saw extensive overhaul during her two months in port. Structural damage was patched up and the forward deck gun was finally removed. In addition to this, the boat was fitted with a snorkel which will allow us to use the diesel engines underwater. It is about time something that was developed to counter the Allied ASW aircraft threat. Early on February 2nd, 1944, U-531 departed Lorient for her 8th war patrol. Hopefully, it will not be cut short. Hello everybody, Wolfpack here. And welcome back aboard U-531 as we depart Lorient for our 8th patrol. As some of you may remember, our 7th patrol was cut rather short by two twin-engine bombers who dropped their bombs and inflicted quite heavy damage on our boat. We were thankfully able to limp back home uh, just barely. We've been in dock for around two months, give or take, and during that time we've seen quite a few upgrades to our U-boat. Let's go ahead and bring up the UI. Got our radar contact. Now, as you can see, we have all mass uh, our radar antenna spinning as well as our radio direction finder there. One of them is actually, I guess, technically a downgrade. The deck gun has been removed from the boat. At this point in the war, most U boats were not setting sail with their deck guns as they're pretty useless. Most merchant ships are extremely heavily armored, as we have seen. And uh, honestly, the amount of times we're able to use the deck gun, I, I probably shouldn't use it as much as I have been. It's quite dangerous and can result in crew casualties and even the loss of our boat. So it's probably a good thing it has been removed. There were some exceptions of some U-boats keeping their guns, but for the most part, they were uh, ditched altogether. One other piece of equipment that some of you may have seen right now is the snorkel, which is laying right here. Let's go ahead and yeah, raise it, there, actually. Calloway. We'll back up so you can get a good look at it as most of you already know the snorkel allows us to use our diesel engines while submerged so that is quite a large benefit in theory we will never have to surface although I probably will still so we can recharge our batteries lower the snorkel and continue to run on batteries the snorkel is not the end-all be-all that a lot of people seem to think it is it can be easily detected uh, for one uh, Visibility-wise, it kicks up a mighty large wake on the surface of the water. Also, the exhaust from the diesel engines is pumped out of the snorkel as well. So you have a big wake and then a big smoke trail coming from it. It can also be detected on radar and most definitely will be detected on radar later in the war by aircraft and ships. One other drawback to the snorkel is we cannot use our hydrophones while the diesels are operational. Uh, you cannot hear anything while they are running. So that we are essentially blind when we are running our diesels and the snorkels up. Which is another pretty big drawback, especially if the enemy can pick you up on radar. And we can't make full use of the high, higher speeds, I guess, of the snorkel. We'll test it because I am curious. Um, the higher speeds of using our diesels underwater because the periscope is limited at four knots. The vibrations make it so you can't see anything. And then I believe at six knots, you're forced to lower the scope. So uh, like I said, I'm just tempering expectations, I suppose, and tempering my expectations with this because I really don't think it's gonna be the end all be all uh, for this series. As a matter of fact, it may result in our destruction because if I'm not paying attention, I'm just running with a snorkel a plane could just fly right overhead, drop a bomb on it, and that is it for us. So we need to be very careful about that. Let's go ahead yeah, and lower the scope. Calling. But the advantages are mighty clear and mighty good. Uh, being able to recharge your batteries underwater is fantastic. One other thing. Well, let's check our torpedo loadout. Uh, the external reserves, we're not going to pay attention to those. As I explained in the previous episode, these were not carried later in the war for a couple of reasons. One, it's just super dangerous uh, to reload these. It takes hours and you're limited at very slow speeds. And uh, two, U-boats were being pushed deeper and deeper. And uh, I guess having external tubes is uh, dangerous to whole integrity. 
Uh, the four tubes, we really took the bare basic loadout here. I took what they gave me. Uh, we're running pretty low on Renown, so I do want to be cautious of that. I wasn't trying to spend Renown whenever I had really not much to spend because we got to save for that Type 21. We have a T3 Fat 2 and the forward reserves, which is the ladder pattern uh, torpedo. And this one is electric, which is nice. And in the aft tube and tube number five, we have one T4, which is the homing torpedo. And this one's limited to 12 knots. So the target has to be moving 12 knots. I'll probably end up using it on a warship if I'm being frank. And <laughs> it doesn't end there. Uh, we, this is, so all this, you know, new equipment and the snorkel, that's, that's good news. Now on to the bad news. We had quite a few crew transfers here. Uh, for one, my weapons officer was transferred off the boat and replaced with Warner Dietrichs, who has zero qualifications. He is pretty much a glorified petty officer and really just straight up fresh off the off the docks, I guess. Um, he has pretty low experience and he barely even contributes anywhere. He is he's pretty useless, um, but don't let him hear me say that. And then our weapon, or our watch officer, who was really good, was also transferred off the boat. And we were, was replaced with Emma Gleisler, who is just a lowly watchman. Who is, I mean, at least he has a qualification, so he has that going for him. But, uh, yeah, as the war chugs on, you know, these men are going to be pushed into other areas and given commands when they're not ready. And, uh, this guy certainly probably isn't ready to be our weapons officer, but we have him. One thing I did do using Silent Hunter 3 Commander, this this chap, uh, Will Stoller, was transferred on board as well. He was a flat gunner. And one thing I did do with Silent Hunter 3 Commander is give four sailors flat gunner qualifications. I don't believe this actually boosts how good they are at flat gunning. Uh, it's really just for me to keep track of them. Because last episode, if you remember, my flat gunners weren't firing. And that is a funny way the game handles fatigue. Those sailors were pretty tired, so they weren't going to shoot the guns. This allows me to keep track of these four sailors, my four flat gunners, and they are going to stay in the barracks and they are going to be well rested always, <laughs> uh, as far as I'm concerned. So that way we don't run into that issue again, where I man the flat guns and they are all tired and they won't shoot back, which is what we needed at that time. So I have to drag them on manually. That's why I don't think they actually uh, contribute. Like if we remove this guy, the petty officer, there decreases significantly. I mean, that's not very good. If I just replace it, yeah, see. If I just replace them with ordinary sailors. So it's purely uh, cosmetic and really just for me to keep track because I don't want to run into that situation again. That's extremely frustrating. Um, I don't like to get caught on the surface and have to use the guns, but last time when we actually did and were caught on the surface, it was an abysmal failure. <laughs> so, uh, that is that. Uh, I believe that rant is over. Other than that, we really don't have anything else uh, of import to add. Um, yeah, no new radar, no new nothing. We have very little renown. Renown is... Very poor, and I really want to start saving for uh, the rumors of the new boat. I heard it sounds really good, isn't that right? Yeah, sounds pretty promising. Electro boat, whatever that is. But we're going to depart Lorient here, and we're going to follow our little escort who has the nice barrage balloons for us. It makes it nice and easy to follow him around. And we're going to get out of here and travel through the Bay of Biscay. Once we are in the depths of the Bay of Biscay. We'll test out that snorkel and see what it can do. But that's enough for my ramble. I'm sorry to put you all through that. I'll cut now and get out of Lorient. I do want to make sure I am uh, missing all of these nasty, nasty mines. Um, I'm actually cutting it a little close, so I'll have to jog this course a little eastward. I really don't want to be killed by my own mines. How embarrassing would that be? U-531 is around 60 kilometers away from Lorient at this point. It is 10 till noon here, and we have detected another submarine. There's a U-boat heading into base way out there. 
What's its range? It looks pretty far off. Oh, it's only 3,000 meters away. Wow, that's pretty close. You can see how small a U-boat actually is at range and how difficult they probably would be able to spot just a bit further away. So, huh. Really puts things under perspective, I suppose. Our boat is currently sailing at 10 knots. I'm actually going to bump that up to standard speed as we maneuver through the Bay of Biscay. I probably could submerge the boat. Uh, depth under keel is 81 meters. I just took a look, but I'm going to get into a bit deeper water before we submerge. I'm going to make this dash on the surface. Well, the sun is about to set. We have not been picked up by any aircraft or anything like that just yet, but we're going to submerge the boat and test out our snorkel. We are in fairly bit deeper water now. Let's take oh, another look. 138 meters. And it's starting to drop off quite rapidly. So let's go down to yeah, periscope depth. Again. And we'll check out this snorkel and see how it goes. And down the boat goes. slowly goes under. The dive time of this boat leaves a lot to be desired, especially later in the war. <laughs> That's such a large target. Especially if aircraft are going to be spotted at the range they were last time. Okay, and we are golden. Once we get down to around uh, 12 meters, we'll pop up the snorkel. I want to test the snorkel at periscope depth and then also at Snorkel depth. A slower speed. Okay. Raise the snorkel. And we'll watch it down here. There she goes. Look at that. And it's about to connect there. It's connected. And we should begin using diesel engines. There we go. We are recharging batteries now. And we are using our diesels. You can see only one screw is turning because the other diesel is recharging the batteries. And smoke should be coming out of it. I don't know if the mod actually um, models that or the game in general. I know the base game doesn't. I didn't know if a mod changed it, but in real life exhaust would be coming out of this. Let's increase speed. Let's go flank. And, okay, we aren't recharging batteries. I was about to say, there wasn't too much to recharge. Going flank. Oh, we are limited. Okay. So the hard-coded fixes actually limits our speed with the snorkel to six knots. Which I think is still even too fast for us to raise our scope. That makes sense. Yep. Our scope's all blurry. We can keep it up, but we're not going to be able to see diddly squat while the snorkel's operating. We'll, we can drop it down to four. We should be able to see. Oh, we're not going to be able to go too fast with the snorkel, it would seem, which is good to know. I really don't play late war too often, so this is going to be an interesting learning experience for me. Okay, let's lower the scope and bring the boat to snorkel depth. How do I do that? There we go, I think I remember the key. There we go. I remember the hotkey. Snorkel depth is pretty shallow, and in my experience, it normally leaves the uh, the conning tower of the boat kind of exposed. We'll see here. Slowly coming up. Oh, I guess snorkel depth is right here. Okay, this is snorkel depth, around 11 meters. Which isn't too bad. That's actually pretty good. Just skimming the surface. and choppier seas, I can't see how this would be an issue, but... Okay. Nice. Let me check our hydrophone. 
Yeah, we're not going to be able to hear anything on that. We won't pick up any contacts. I guess uh, on here. The sound's not really drowned out, but... Okay, so that is a quick demonstration of the snorkel. I'm actually going to lower it and we'll run on electric motors for the time being. And we'll raise it in the daytime, recharge our batteries a little bit, and then lower it again and make the complete, the rest of the transit of the Bay of Biscay completely uh, submerged. Uh, let's lower the snorkel and we'll go down to 40 meters. Now for figuring out where our objective is, CE-24. Oh boy. Isn't this right where we were bombed? CE-24, 24. So I'm going to be up here. Yep, right here. And that is our objective, and that's where we'll head to. Can't say I'm too excited to do that, but I do believe we, we were bombed in this area in the last patrol. So uh, I guess we'll be putting the snorkel to a lot of use <laughs> this patrol more than I would expect. Can't believe they're sending me here right where, right back where I was. I don't like that. Not, not a fan. Not a fan at all. U-488 is still here. That's a miracle. I can't believe that thing hasn't been sunk yet, but... Anyway, we will sail on, we'll go slow speed, and continue onward. Well, we have been snorkeling for a few days now. It's currently February 4th, 1944. And as you can see, the sea state has gotten pretty poor. Uh, I was taking a look at the hard-coded fixes manual, and there are speed restrictions when snorkeling, and it's wind-dependent and wave-dependent, really. Uh, so at a wind speed of 0 to 5 meters per second, the U-boat speed is restricted to one-third. At a wind speed of 6 to 10 meters per second, it is restricted to slow speed, and at wind speeds like what we are experiencing now, 11 to 15 meters, meters per second snorkeling is impossible so we will have to surface the boat to recharge our batteries batteries and we're going to do that now this is good to know because honestly I, I did not know that it's a good thing I looked it up <laughs> I do really like these hard-coded fixes it forces you to think and the snorkel isn't the wonder weapon that it would be without these sorts of things okay well, we have hit the surface. Let's get this yeah, boat on the move. Let's head standard and get out of the Bay of Biscay. As you would expect, traveling submerged at six knots is painfully slow. It's been two days and we've traveled this much. <laughs> so we are just barely crawling. Hopefully no aircraft are flying in this weather. Let's take a peek. Uh, wind speed is 12 meters per second, so they may be flying. Who knows? We'll find out shortly, I suppose. Okay, we were sailing to our objective. We're currently in grid BE-82, and we just received a contact here of a large convoy sailing north. Speed is medium, and it's in the same grid as us, which is very reassuring. Let's plot this out, and let's see. Oh, excuse me. Guess I didn't. There we go. It's heading north. Let's pull out the hourly chart and get rid of this so we can plot our course accordingly. We'll just do a rough intercept course like so. All ahead, we'll do standard speed. And let's see how long it's going to take this convoy to travel in one hour. Heading 10 knots, 18, we'll do, we'll just round up 20 kilometers in one hour. Oh wow, we are totally going to catch this guy. Let's see how long it'll take us. We got to complete our turn or we can get a good estimate. So I'm going to take five well, yeah let's let's just stick with five hours we'll do six hours just to be sure give us an hour lead 111 kilometers i'll just drag this bad boy out 111 kilometers Ooh, okay i'll be here in six hours not bad actually and uh, we'll be here in five yeah, let's do that. Let's stick with this. That should be okay. If anything, we can go full speed for a little bit. Just blitz ahead. We'll do some time compression and the chase is on. Let's make sure my crew's all hunky dory. You folks get some sleep. Let's get a good watch officer on though. Okay, this is fine. Make sure everyone's well rested, ready to go. Definitely going to have some action here shortly. And since it is so dark, it's four hours before midnight. Let's raise our radar. Get that bad boy going. There we go. Perfect. 
Hopefully we can pick them up on radar before they can pick us up. We'll find out shortly though. The waves are still pretty rough. The weather's actually pitiful. Fog is medium, wind speed is 12 meters per second, and it's so dark. I may have to wait till morning and stalk the convoy so I can actually see what I'm shooting at. Uh, I was just guessing they were going 10 knots. Speed is 8 knots. Wow, we are going to totally beat them then. Let's just cut east then. Whenever I see medium speed, I just automatically assume it's 10 knots. That's generally what they're they're sailing at. Fog sighted. That's not good. Now it's raining. Oh boy, this is looking less and less likely <laughs> the more we press on. Okay, it is midnight now? Mm, this is going to be difficult. This is going to be difficult. I'll cut south. We'll submerge the boat once we hit this leg. Haven't picked anything up on radar. Which isn't surprising with these tall, tall waves. Let's see. Yeah, wind is like five and a half meters. Or the, um, the wave height. Okay, well, we're going to drop down. Let's go to 40 meters and take a listen down there. See if we can hear these guys. And slow down. I'll get on the hydrophones and take a listen. We have this new hydrophone array, the Belkin Garrett, which we weren't really able to use too much in the previous episode for complicated reasons. I don't hear anything, however. Oh boy. Turn up the volume. Nada. Well, this is their general course. Unless they change course, which is completely possible, they may have turned northeast to head, you know, to Great Britain there. I'm going to lay low here and wait till we pick them up on hydrophones. It may take a while. We did beat them, especially if they were only going eight knots. So we'll see what I can find. Well, it's quite a bit later now, and absolutely nothing has been picked up, so I think they probably did change course and we missed them. Maybe we'll get another update here momentarily, but we're going to surface the boat and continue on our original course. I did not hear a single thing on the hydrophones, um, which is kind of disappointing. I really thought we may have, at least, we would have at least heard them. Now, seeing them is a different story, but we didn't even hear them, which is quite surprising so that leads me to believe they did change course and they're either heading towards uh, the UK or even Canada or whatnot uh, UK is probably more likely there okay well we'll surface the boat and continue on our merry way okay we have an issue my crew's crouching down I think there's a plane crash dive what the heck's going on my time compression is limited to eight times. They haven't called out an aircraft, but I'm just gonna go ahead and crash dive. The game is giving me the hint. Oh, there's nothing in the area, which is, oh, there he is. Oh my God, holy shit. Get under, get under, get under, get under. Oh gosh, this dive time is excruciating right now. Rudder and midships. Oh, that's a nice string of bombs, isn't it? That's a nice string of bombs. Whew. Hook damage. Okay, they just rocked us around a little bit. Looks like we are out of the area. Okay. Wow. Interesting. And the only indication I had of that was the time compression drop. Which, uh, it's kind of lame. My crew didn't alert me to that. Drop down to 60 meters and we are hanging out down here. <laughs> we are getting pretty close to where we were bombed previously. Honestly, this may be the same exact area. Uh, 600. Uh, almost 700 kilometers away, but who knows? Let's see, where is that guy? I did not get a good look at the plane. I. I think I remember it being a four-engine aircraft. Definitely land-based. Almost certainly coming from the Azores here. Well, we were very lucky we got out of that one at AOK. 
with uh, minimal damage. Probably just get, scratch the paint there. Oh, that is a wake up call. We will stay submerged. As you can see, the weather conditions have cleared up a little bit, but it's still pretty windy and pretty choppy out. I didn't know, I didn't really think they'd be flying too much, but they were, and they found me. So we're gonna stay submerged during the daytime, surface at night. I do believe it's still too rough to use the snorkel, unfortunately, so that is not an option. Well, we are pretty close to our objective here, and as you can see, the weather, the seas have really calmed down. It's actually really glassy out, so we're gonna yep, raise our snorkel going. Recharge our batteries a little bit, uh, lower the snorkel, and continue towards our objective. I'm going to do a quick scan, however. I should have used my observation scope. Let's raise that. Make sure there's no aircraft about, although they will home in on this bad this guy really quickly. I don't see anything extremely close. Yeah, nothing yet. I'm going to keep our observation scope up, so hopefully whoever... They will spot contacts organically as they close in, so this combo may work out. We're cruising at three knots. That should be fine. That should be fine. Let's see. Let's make sure we're actually recharging batteries, and indeed we are. We are getting close. We're around 130 kilometers away from grid CE24. We're going to conduct our 24-hour patrol in this area, and I'm what... If the weather stays like this, I'll just do the whole thing submerge. I see no reason to surface the boat at all um i will raise the snorkel in short little spurts as to avoid any uh av avoid any aircraft homing in on it and uh, blowing us to smithereens battery's almost recharged already i actually was just surfaced not too long ago and it should be recharged shortly there we go and i'm gonna lower the snorkel I figure it's probably best to recharge my batteries with the snorkel at night as well, because that is just, that's pretty easy to see. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, lower the snorkel. Going. And we'll also lower our observation scope and we'll drop down to around 40 meters. We have not heard a single vessel this entire time. Nothing has been picked up on hydrophones or radar or anything watch crew hasn't seen anything either let's go down to 40 meters the only thing we saw was that aircraft that almost killed us again okay but maybe we'll pick up something in ce24 i honestly once we're done in this area with this grid i think i'm gonna move north towards grid bd uh just in the mid-atlantic and try to catch convoys going from to and from North America. I guess I could go south as well. That's a tricky, I think I'll hang out north. If it's really hostile here, then we'll go south into like grid D, E, D, F. But I do want to hang out in the mid Atlantic gap here and uh, not travel too far. But we're almost to our objective, CE24. I'll let you get folks know when we are in it. All right, we have arrived in grid CE24. We're currently operating at periscope depths with the observation scope up just to see if we can find anything. The seas are still silky smooth, as you can see. Perfect weather for spotting if you're in an aircraft or if you're us. It goes both ways, I suppose. Well, anyway, we'll keep sailing around. Uh, we have to patrol this area for 24 hours and then our objective will be complete. Uh, it's kind of crazy how little we've actually seen uh it's like the whole atlantic has been emptied out <laughs> well and that does it our patrol obligations have been completed we've been in grid ce24 for over 24 hours let's get rid of all of this and we will head north towards grid bd just just another grid over and i'm hoping we can catch a lot of these convoys here just that go through the middle of uh, grid bd England, Halifax, OA, and OB. So that is the current plan of action. And that's what we will head for. It's been a pretty uneventful first episode of this patrol, but we do also have to remember that the Allies are reading all of our radio messages. In real life, U-boats would send radio messages constantly back to BDU. Uh, and they would micromanage the U-boats, their positions. I mean, even weather reports were sent in uh, every day. 
and uh, the Allies were reading these and knew where all the U-boats were and were routing traffic away from them. So maybe we are just experiencing some of that. But that's really all I have for this episode. I've been playing for quite a while, uh, taking it nice and slow, messing around with the snorkel. The snorkel has been quite a bit of fun. It is fun to use. And you see we still have our observation scope out, just keeping an eye out for any pesky aircraft or warships that may happen to sneak up on us. Before I leave, I want to do one hydrophone check, just to be sure. So I hate to leave you folks without the satisfaction of a kill, but that's just how things are uh, turning. We are not the hunters anymore. We are most definitely the hunted. And that shows with that aircraft bombing us. Okay. Nothing here. But overall, the snorkel has been a quite handy piece of equipment. We weren't able to use it for a good chunk of our journey due to the rough sea conditions, but in weather like this, it is quite nice just to pop it up, refill your air, and pop it back down. That's how I'll use it. I don't think I'll... I really don't see myself cruising with the snorkel up, mostly because, I mean, we can't use our hydrophones, and that really just defeats the purpose of submerging... or sailing submerged, excuse me. So I think it's best just to pop it up, recharge your batteries and oxygen, and then pop it back down, and just sail around on electrics for the most part. I hope you all enjoyed this first episode of our 8th Patrol. It was quite an uneventful one, but uh, nonetheless, I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to leave a like, as always, and thank you all for watching. This is Wolfpack345 signing off, and I'll see you all on episode number 2 of our 8th Patrol.